Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Respected Viewers, Brothers and Sisters in Islam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Hello and welcome to the 14th episode of the Treaties of Rights series with me, Ali Jassim. Today we will talk about the right of the Father. Regarding this, Imam Zain al-Abidin al-Sajjad, peace and blessings be upon him, has said, and the right of your father is that you should know that he is your root and you are his branch. And without him, you would not be. Whenever you see anything in yourself which pleases you, you should know that your father is the root of its blessing upon you. So praise God and thank him in recognition of that. And there is no power but in God. From the moment a child is born, they look for their male role model. Imam al-Sajjad, Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, points out the most fundamental cause-effect relationship between a father and his child. This scientific and philosophical principle states that the father is the root of the child or the cause of the existence of the child. Were it not for the existence of the father, the child would not exist. The existence of the child is dependent on the existence of the father. This is manifested all over the world. Here the Imam, peace and blessings be upon him, reminds the child the importance of the existence of the father and explicitly declares that the father is the root and the children are like his branches. Thus, whatever is manifested in the child has its roots in the existence of this father. Another important issue is that once a child is born, he starts to grow up and continues his development while his father may have already completed his growth or be near its completion. The sad reality that very little notice is that as the child develops, the father gets older and older, consequently getting weaker. It is at this time that the child may become proud that they're stronger than their father. If he starts to feel superior to his father, he might forget to respect his father or even disrespect him. Imam al-Sajjad, peace and blessings be upon him, advises the children to remember that their father is the root of whatever excellent qualities they have whenever they feel this way. Imam al-Sajjad also recommends the children to be grateful and recognize the blessings granted to them. Hence, they will be responsible children and fulfill all their duties regarding their father. This way, they will also be saved from the harms they might experience in case their parents damn them. At last, Imam al-Sajjad, peace be upon him, stresses that recognizing the blessings from our father, his rights, and properly performing our duties regarding him is only possible through divine assistance. And we should ask God to help us in this respect. Muhammad ibn Yahya quoted on the authority of Ahmad ibn Isa, on the authority of Hassan ibn Mahmud, on the authority of Ali Walid Hannat, who asked Imam al-Sadiq, peace and blessings be upon him, regarding the meaning of the following verse of the Holy Quran, and that ye be kind to parents. The Holy Quran, chapter 17, verse 23. Imam al-Sadiq said, goodness, Ahsan, is that you associate with them well, and you do not constrain them to ask you for what they need, even if they may be rich. Then Imam al-Sadiq mentioned the verse of the Holy Quran that states that you cannot get any food unless you give in charity out of what you like. Then Imam al-Sadiq said, As for the statement of God, the blessed, the high, whether one or both of them attain old age in thy life, say not to them a word of contempt, nor repel them. Chapter 17, verse 23. The Imam, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If they vex you, then do not say a word of contempt to them, and do not repel them if they strike you. He said, But address them in terms of honor. Chapter 17, verse 23. Meaning, even if they strike you, say to them, May God forgive you. And that will be your addressing them in terms of honor. He said, And out of kindness, lower to them the wing of humility. Chapter 17, verse 24. Meaning, do not look at them directly except with mercy and compassion. Do not raise your voice above their voices and your hands above theirs. And do not walk ahead of them. Allah has commanded that we worship God firstly and obey our parents secondly. Gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to parents go hand in hand. Gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is incomplete without showing gratitude to one's parents. Since being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a form of ibadah, worship, which means heavenly rewards, it can therefore be said that being grateful to one's parents also earns heavenly rewards. No one has the right to raise their voice higher than the voice of his parents, nor look towards them even eye to eye, nor walk in advance of them, nor address them with their names. Let's go for a quick short break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
welcome back. Respecting and honoring our parents is not only an Islamic viewpoint, but a universal one. It is one of the most prominent lessons in the Holy Quran. Not only in the Quran is it greatly important, but narrations of the Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them, have greatly emphasized on the importance of respecting parents. Regardless of one's viewpoint, we are forever indebted to our parents. References to parents have been made at least 15 times in the Holy Quran. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has referred to respecting parents on many occasions. Some of these quotes are Allah's pleasure is in the pleasure of the father and Allah's displeasure is in the displeasure of the father. And he who wishes to enter paradise through its best door must please his parents. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, the great grandson of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is reported to have quoted Imam Ali, peace be upon him, that disobedience to parents is a major sin. He also stated that if a person looks at the face of his or her parents with wrathful eyes, despite the fact that injustice was done to him or her by the parents, his or her salah, prayer, will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has also been related that the very first word which have been written on the Loha Mahfud, the heavenly preserved tablet, are, I am Allah and there is no deity except me. I am pleased with those with whom their parents are displeased, and I am displeased with those with whom their parents are displeased. Ibn Mahbub quoted on the authority of Khalid bin Nafih Bujaili, on the authority of Muhammad bin Marwan, on the authority of Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, a man went to see the Prophet and asked him for advice. The Prophet said, do not set any partners for God, even if you are tortured or burnt in fire, but that your heart should be secure in faith. Obey your parents and be kind to them, whether they are living or deceased. If they order you to leave your family and, and your possessions, do so, since that is part of your faith. Ali ibn Ibrahim quoted on the authority of Muhammad ibn Isa ibn Ubaid, on the authority of Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman, on the authority of Durust ibn Abi Mansur, on the authority of Imam al Kadhim, peace and blessings be upon him. A man asked the noble prophet, peace be upon him, his spirit family, about the right of a father incumbent upon his child. The, the prophet replied, he should not call his father by his name, and he should not walk ahead of him. He should not sit down before he does, and he should not do things to cause his father to be blamed or sworn at. Muhammad ibn Yahya quoted on the authority of so and so, on the authority of Ibrahim ibn Shu'aib, that he told Mam Sadiq, My father has gone old and is so weak that I have to accompany him to the toilet. Should I do so? The Prophet said, do so if you can. Put food in his mouth with your own hands, and you will see that your reward will be the garden of the heaven in the hereafter. Therefore, Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, recommends that children take care of their parents when they get old and weak, just as they did when the children were young and weak. Muhaqiq Ardabili said, it is reasonable to say that one should avoid being damned by his parents. Traditions and Quranic verses also support this. Children must obey their parents. The jurisprudence have stated that if the leader has not declared holy war on, or the infidels have not attacked Muslim lands, parents can prevent their children from going to war. Whatever is forbidden or incumbent upon one regarding strangers also hold for parents. One, one cannot travel without the permission of his parents. Two, one must obey his parents. Three, parents can prevent one from participation in war. Four, if one is to obey his parents or say his prayers, he should put off the prayers and do what his parents ask them to do. Five, there are times when parents can prevent one from attending the congregational prayers. Imam Zain al Abidin, peace and blessings be upon him, says, It is also said that once a man came to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, spirit family, and asked, I feed my parents, carry them on my back, and clean them. Have I fulfilled my duty towards them? The Holy Prophet answered, No, because you are serving them in anticipation for their death while they served you, wishing you a long life. With that said, let us pray together that Allah keeps us on the right path and that He guides us to be respectful, kind, and obedient to our parents and that we continue to show them humility regardless of the power, position, wealth, or influence we may possess. With this, we conclude this episode. Stay tuned for another episode of the Treaties of Rights. Thank you all for watching and may Allah hasten the reappearance of our beloved Man Mahdi. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oh.